All right, Shalom. First thing and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash. Double honors being to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. This noise in this gospel abroad, lifting up the standard of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, wherever they may be. Uh, this is the Akiya, my lawyer, coming back with another lesson through the Spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Uh, Lord's will it be edifying. Um, this is from RT News. It says dollar will crash in 2021. U.S. should brace for double debt recession. Economist warms. And um, uh, just a side note here, I'm back uploading from this GMS Kansas City page. And to further notice, um, I may post this on the two other sites I've been uploading to for the last two weeks, too. But uh, this site has more of the uh, subscribers on here that's familiar with the page. But if you subscribe to the other ones too, just for backup reference, in case Esau decides to get butthurt about the content coming out, then I'm, I appreciate it. But anyway, it says here, dollar will crash in 2021. And it makes sense because uh, through this pandemic and uh, the digital dollar that the feds was talking about just depositing into people's accounts, it makes sense now that uh, this is the way that the world is going to shift to because we know that all this is in subjection to what they call the RFID chip which is the mark of the beast that the Bible talks about, okay? Which we have an ever-long <laughs> ever debate about the latter, all right? But the thing about it is we're already convinced that the mark of the beast is the microchip, and, you know, I'm content with that. You know, they just, other people, they don't seem to get it, you know? They don't seem to be readily moved by this thing because in the spirit they're holding on to the, the, the goodies of Babylon, which they're quickly diminishing. All right, so those of you out there that have an ear to hear and a spirit to receive, then receive this because this will lead into the mark of the beast. Because you have to ask yourself, if not, then what else is what what else is the purpose of, of crashing a dollar, bringing it to digital currency, coming up with the whole COVID thing? What is the purpose of all that if it wasn't for the pushing of the RFID chip? Okay, because the dollar crash is going to bring in race riots or class riots. It's going to bring in all types of amid chaos. And the fact that this guy Trump is talking about Operation Warp Speed, sending the military in to um, forcibly inoculate people, what happens is, in the case of a crash, you already have the military personnel that's already in place. So, you know, you already got the, the puzzle pieces that's set up. You know, prime example, back in 2010, 11, and 12, it was old videos on YouTube that they had these MRAPs and these tanks and these drones that was being um, transported from overseas and different uh, military bases in the country that's being transported to these particular cities. So if you, like I remember a few years ago, they did some work in Chicago over east. I believe it was the bridge. I forgot the name of the bridge, but it was like not too far from High Park, but it was a bridge that leads you directly into Indiana. And I remember they had that blocked off for a long time. And um, I speculated that that's where they hid a lot of this military equipment too, because I mean, where else you gonna take it? Unless you place it underground somewhere. But Nonetheless, these things are uh, coming to pass, and through the spirit and power of Hashem Shai, we're able to foretell these things and to warn you people out there to uh, that impending danger is at hand. Okay. So anyway, without further delay, I'm gonna get right into the article. It says next year will be the brutal for the U.S. currency, according to Yale University senior fellow Stephen Roach. It says he sees that it's seemingly crazy idea that the dollar will crash shouldn't seem so crazy anymore. Not because I mean. Look at the planned famine, okay? Look at the uh, food shortages, which that's already orchestrated. You know, food shortages are done by none other than the elites because they're rationing these things out at a particular bargain price. But at the same time, you have a mass influx of genetically modified foods that's being created around the clock to substitute your real foods because, I mean, this is a de defiled and a polluted land, all right? And also, um, you got to look at the fact that goods are going up certain things are going up in the grocery stores like i think a carton of eggs was about 80 something cents now the average carton of eggs is going to run about a dollar and fifty so when mass inflation comes about how much do you think that that carton of eggs is going to skyrocket to same thing with bread butter water you know uh, uh all your necessities that you need oil you know flour whatever you may use these things are going to pretty much skyrocket into unaffordable prices which is going to bring in tension and wars and class wars all right with people clashing with the higher officials of the society because they feel like they've been duped all right especially when you got the average american 
that went to college that's about sixty seventy thousand dollars in debt and they can't get food on top of that these people are gonna lose it man but it says we've got data that's more confirmed both the saving and current amount dynamic in much more dramatic dramatic fashion than i was even looking for and be honest with you the writing is on the wall and esau is really getting sloppy to the point he's not hiding it anymore because i remember reading back in march sometime february march or maybe april when this whole uh pandemic thing kicked off they was talking about by early 2021 they was doing a digital dollar okay if you're gonna do something digital then that means that you're phasing out the phase of of, of of feasible cash okay which is still all a fiat currency you know which just means uh straight whatever but nonetheless um they're they're dumping the, the world's economies they're collapsing okay to go to this one world digital system which this is going to pretty much lead america into the third world war because once the u.s dollar collapsed and all the markets around the world they collapse and this is why you have what you call uh, the OPEC nations, the BRICS nations, which try to succeed from the centralized dollar to set up their own currency because they don't want to be affected by the global scheme of, of, of this monetary system, which is not worth nothing. You know, so the money <laughs> you work and slave for every single day when you go to work, uh, you know, whatever you do, you go on your vacations is really as good as toilet paper. Really, you being paid. You ain't even being paid to do your job technically because it's not real money. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, through the spirit, this is the way the Lord had it set up. So it says, uh, according to him, the current amount of deficit in the United States, which is the broadest measure of our, our international imbalance with the rest of the world, it says suffered a record deterioration in the second quarter. It says he added that the so-called net national savings rate, which are the sum of savings of individuals, businesses and the governing sector, also recorded a record decline in the second quarter going back into the negative territory for the first time since the global financial crisis it says last june economists predicted a collapse of the u.s dollar could happen in the next year too maybe more but now he sees it happening by the end of 2021 i don't give it that long honestly i don't really get the dollar dollar can collapse this year i mean it's technically already collapsed but i mean he uh, 2021 i don't see that happen i see it happening before then but that's just my you know my humble opinion it can be longer i pray that it happens the end of this year i pray that sh hell it happens to the beginning of next year because honestly i don't i don't know how much longer i can really tolerate this place man you know going to work every day and dealing with these people i don't, I don't know how much longer i can deal with that you know but through the spirit i will pre persevere persevere but it's just the mentality of waiting a whole nother year. Like, damn. Like, let this thing come on already. Because what they're going to do, they're going to try to hold this thing afloat as long as they can. But they can't because I believe they ran out of uh, QE4 or QE, which means quantitative easing, which allows them to borrow money from the Fed uh, at a zero to none interest rate. Now they're borrowing money at below negative interest rates. Like, how can you borrow money at a negative 0.5 interest rate? It don't even make sense. Like, are you paying less on interest than less? If you're paying 0% interest on the money, how can you pay any less than 0%? It don't make sense to show you that this system is all tainted and it's stupid, you know? But it says here, uh, it says, lacking in saving and wanting to grow, we run these current amount deficits to borrow surplus savings and that always pushes the currency lower he said but the dollar is not immune to that time on an adjustment baroach as the former chairman of morgan stanley asia also put the probability of a double dip recession in the u.s above 50 percent but as we head into flu season with the new infection rates moving back up again and mortality unacceptably high it says the risk of an aftershock is not something you can dismiss, he said. But the records of history suggest that this is not a time unlikely what the frothy markets are doing to bet. This is different. All right. So, man, this is impending doom. <laughs> America's out of here. All right. So uh, the Lord is allowing you people to have your last little barbecue, little backyard picnics before he just closed curtains on Babylon. Because, I mean... I mean, it's said and done. It's, it's, it's no point. This country is done, okay? It's overdue. And, hey, the only thing we can do is say, call hello, you how about Shimmy how was shy. All right? So our job as watchmen is to blow the trumpet. All right? So this is the book of Joel 2 and 1. It says, Blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And this 
whole recession or depression or economic collapses was going to lead up to even greater tensions around the world. They're going to lead up to even more, uh, 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 how can I say it, more tensions among the nations, okay? Because basically Russia and China, they're over there testing each other's fabric. Iran, they're completely at odds with America and they're planning a retaliatory strike for that guy being assassinated at the beginning of the year. All right, and we already know that Russia backs China in uh, Russia, I mean, Salaka in Iran. So <laughs> it's it's America, you're in, you're in the middle of a crossfire right now. And that's perfectly uh, the, the plan of the Most High. He's playing chess with himself, basically. And they say the best chess player is a player that plays with himself because you outthinking yourself, man. You two steps, three steps ahead of yourself. So it's, it's cold, man. It's a way of tricking your mind into being quick on your feet, so to speak. You know, like I haven't played chess in some years, man, but when I played, I was actually pretty good at it because, you know, I like to think three steps ahead. So, you know, brothers out there, get your chess board, man. You know, it, it, it's it's muscle memory. You know, it, it proves the, the cognitive dissonance that you can have and that you can improve on your on your on your pacing, so to speak. You know, but anyway, uh, scripture, I want to pull Habakkuk, the second chapter, because I believe America is it's in a what, 22 trillion dollar deficit which they can never pay back. And that's just on paper. So more likely the deficit are going to be well over 4 trillion, 400 trillion that they will never be able to pay back. Because what's so funny is that the Federal Reserve or the Fed that they print the money, they loan you the money, <laughs> your own money back to you and you paying interest rates on your own money. That's retarded, man. Because the Fed loans it to the government and then the government gives it to you at a higher interest rate. That's stupidity because believe it or not, the Federal Reserve is not a conglomerate of the United States. It's a private owned bank. All right, by the Rothschilds, by the Morgans, by the, the, the DuPonts, the Gettys. They all have a hand in this fiat currency system that we got set up. All right, they loan it to the federal government at an interest rate, and the government gives it to you at a higher interest rate, and therefore you become a debt citizen. You're a, a slave to debt. That's why it's called a debt note because using the US dollar, you will never get out of debt. All right. When you pay everything golf and I ain't talking about being behind a couple of thousands of dollars in medical bills. I'm talking about people that got businesses, man, you know, boats and, and toys they like to play with houses, property, businesses, you know, things like that. Escort accounts, those things like that, man, you be in debt like like crazy, you know, like when you see these big bankers or these big uh, real estate moguls, they be on their boats and their yachts. Those men are highly in debt. Yeah, they may appear to have money. You know, and they may have cash on hand, but really they're operating off what you call a credit based system. All right. Because the assets which allows them to get a higher line of credit. And if they make good on certain payments, they have a extended line of credit. But at the end of the day, it comes back to bite them. Like if you got a five hundred thousand dollar credit line, you're doing relatively good. But remember, that five hundred thousand dollar credit line is going to come back and bite you because you're going to take advantage of that that wide spectrum spectrum of, of freedom, so to speak. That's why. Me personally, I don't deal with credit cards. I don't. I never had it. I had one credit card, and after I paid it off, I got rid of it. All right. I don't deal with credit cards, and in this society, you need credit. But hey, shit, pay your bills on time, you know. But other than that, I don't deal with credit cards. You know, like if I wanted to take out a line of credit now, I probably can get you know some decent rates. But I don't deal with that stuff because I already understand it's a trap, you know. And it would be something I would never be able to get myself back from, you know. Like as if I'm not struggling already, <laughs> you know. But anyway, it says, Habakkuk 2 and 1, it says here, And I was standing upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watched to see what he was saying to me, okay? And this is what we're doing. When we're speaking these words, we're going out to the streets. We're prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, to let the people know what's going to befall them. Even though they don't listen, we're doing our job, okay? Because this was prophesied by Yahweh, Shai, himself in Matthew 24th chapter, when he says that they should be marrying and giving it to marriage. Then the flood came and took them. So, of course, you're going to have the masses of the people that's not going to hop on a board with this thing because if they, the Lord, they don't see it coming. And even if they do see it coming, they don't understand mentally on how to deal or cope with it. So they turn a blind eye to it. That's the reason why a lot of two thirds, they just don't they, they act like they don't see it because two thirds, man, they don't want to deal with the reality. They don't want to deal with truth. All right. They so stuck in a lethargic state of mind. They don't want to deal with the truth. And that's just the reality of it. So you ever get mad and cuss them out and put curses on them. But at the end of the day, <coughs> you're beating a dead horse by even thinking about these clowns, you know. 
But it says, and I will stand upon my watch and set me upon a tower and will watch to see what he was saying to me and what should I answer when I am reproved. And the Lord said unto me, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Right. So when you see these prophecies come to pass, you know, you need to hop on board with it. You need to <laughs> get in tune with the spirit. All right. Because you don't want to be left out there. And a lot of you going to be left out there. And I've been noticing a lot of things about you. You young Jakes out there. You real, real young men that came in about a year or two ago. Maybe three. Man, you dudes are off the chain, man. You know, you all out of order. And the most I going to put you over the knee and spank you if you don't get right. You know, because I noticed like a lot of brothers, man, they, they doing a lot of folly, man. You know. And I ain't talking about nobody in Great Millstone, but you got these little splinter guys, man, that break off or that never came up under us per se because, you know, they would just, like the scriptures going to stragglers will be left behind. And you got sincere brothers out there that's not in Great Millstone or they may have left the camp that's sincerely doing the work in truth. We're not speaking on brothers like that because I know a handful of brothers, you know what I'm saying, that it's not in GMS, but they push the same doctrine and, hey, you know, they, they're doing good. They're increasing in the spirit. You know, those brothers getting experience in, but we're talking about these young social media bandits, man. You know, that's all about the selfies and, the, you know, all just just think this is a damn joke. You know, think this is a joke. And when you look at their teachings, man, you don't even see the spirit in them. You don't see the sincerity in them. You know, like, dog, y'all just doing things just to say you're doing it just so people can be all at your work. But really, man, you can read or you can look at a video or peak people's spirit and know if they got the spirit in them, man. And I've seen a lot of cats. I'm like, this guy ain't got, he ain't got it. And you got some cats out there that's sincere. You know what I'm saying? And you can clearly pick that up. Like, I seen a video today of this young Jake. I'm not going to give his name, you know. He never done anything to me, whatever. You know, I checked his YouTube. It's his tree out. And, um, you know, he's teaching what we teach. Nonetheless, but I just... I don't see, I don't, I don't feel that he's all the way connected. You know what I'm saying? I might need to message him and say, hey man, you need to tighten up. Matter of fact, I have to do that. I got to tighten up. But he was with another brother and you could tell they're real young in the faith. And uh, the young brother, you know, you could tell they're real young. They're still learning. They're not as solid because they're young, but I can see the sincerity in him. I can see it in his spirit. I feel him. Like, yeah, this, this brother is more sincere than this brother. And I say that because this brother, he's, he's just he's he's too he's too about imagery or it's just the fact that he he just it's just something to do you know what i'm saying so he may need a serious rebuking like bro get your shit together man or you will be destroyed you know so you know you brothers that's been in the faith for some time man you see these young cats man hey clink pick them hey rebuke them tell them look get y'all stuff together because the scriptures say uh open rebuke is better than secret love man so i'm gonna have to tell him like hey bro you're gonna have to tighten up man Matter of fact, I'm going to send him a message on this page. Like, you don't have to tighten this shit up, man. Stop playing games, man. Really, and you do your lesson. Stop being in the damn dark room. All right? Speak clearly. Show your face. If you don't, if you ain't doing a screen recording like I am, then show your face. All right? Stop being distracted by whatever you got going on and do the work. Stop being in the damn dark. Like the other brother, he's teaching, you know, he's in a light room, illuminated room, and he's doing work. Other bro, man, I mean, he's in a dark room, but he's drawing off the light from his phone. Come on, man. Don't be half-assed in his work. You know, don't half-ass the work. Do the work of the Most High. All right? And do it sincerely. Stop playing games with it. That's why I said a lot of you dudes, man, you don't know what you in. And he's going to be the same cats, man. You rebuke them, and you try to tell them to straighten up by them being so young in the faith. They're going to get offended and they're going to start scoffing. But, hey, if you start scoffing, then that's because you was never a man of the Lord anyway. And that may be my next topic. But Salakia for being sidetracked. But anyway, it says here, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The collapse of the dollar. The collapse of the dollar is not, all right? All this, going to work, getting your paycheck. So, you know, that you ain't going to be able to get no cash out the ATMs. It's going to be things done on a digital card. Like, if you notice, they've been doing direct deposits for over 20 years. You know, back in the day, you was considered crazy if you decided to get a direct deposit and not a paper check in the mail. All right. Which they're very reluctant to do. But now direct deposit, credit cards, uh, Google Pay, PayPal, you know, cash app, you know, uh, uh, what's another one? Uh, 
forgot it's another one but anyway these different banking apps they're already getting you prepared to do things digitally all right because back in the day i remember i used to get off work this is before i even had a bank account this is probably like in 2002 when i had my first school job i used to work i used to i was part of this program called uh what was it called after school matters man and i was in the uh, tech program and uh, i remember you know we used to pretty much get paid for for uh get paid for for learning about new things and computers or whatever you sign up for they used to pay us 90 dollars every two weeks i remember <laughs> you know and um, i used to have to go to the atm i mean not the atm but to curse exchange to cash my check and they give me cash back while i deposit a check in my mother's or whoever's account and i get the money back that way you know then i start working for the summer making a little bit more money but you know then you just go there cash a check it may be a dollar fifty to cash a check now man you go cash a check three hundred dollar check at a currency exchange they charge you probably twenty percent off that all right so they're trying to show you right there they're trying to phase out this money but anyway it says here behold his soul which is lifted up him is not right but the just shall live by his faith but yea also because he transgressed by wine he is a proud man, neither keep it at home. Why? Because Esau Edom is over the earth, taking over lands. He's bombing innocent villages. He's trying to promote democracy, all right? He's stealing resources. You know, he's encamping around the earth, spreading his rhetoric. And it says, who enlarges his desire is hell and is his death and cannot be satisfied, which proves that hell is not a mystical dungeon under the ground, all right? Because they're equating it to Esau. It says, and cannot be satisfied, but gather it unto him all nations and heap it unto him all people. But shall not these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, and how long, and to him that laddeth himself with thick clay. All right, thick clay goes into the Hebrew word I bought yet, which means debt, thick debt. And like I said, if you look up the um, U.S. debt on a national scale, hey, they're going to be well over $22 trillion, which they would never be able to pay that back to the Fed. It's just not going to happen. So eventually these markets are just going to collapse and they're going to topple. And that's going to be the end of Babylon, she wrote. All right, I got one more precept and I'm going to shut it down. I believe the point is being made. But anyway, this is the book of Isaiah 19. And like I said, these are going to bring about a lot of class riots, a lot of chaos. People are going to be looting this. You think they're doing it now? Wait till they can't go to them ATMs and get the money for the necessities of food. These people are going to lose it, man. All right, and we're telling you right now. So, hey, you ain't moved by the message of Danae. It's because the spirit wants you to get caught up in this nonsense. But anyway, this is the book of Isaiah 19, and I'm going to start at verses 14. It says, And Yahweh hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to earn every work thereof as a drunken man staggering in his vomit. So everything is going to go to hell. Like right now, they talking about doing a second shutdown. They talking about all non-essential businesses will be closed. All right. Now, you want to consider McDonald's an essential, then go ahead. That may be open. I mean, they're going to leave the worst shit open walmart mcdonald's burger king but like banking jobs man mortgage jobs you know stuff like that those jobs are going to be shut down and on top of that they're going to have another hiring freeze because at my job they had a hiring freeze for the longest like you couldn't like they froze everything and i know that because i used to go in there periodically to see if i can kind of move around and get experience in different apartments i noticed they had a freeze on that man you know so a lot of jobs are shutting down so you know if you got a job now it's very possible by the end of the year you may not have that job. Like me personally, my job is considered essential, but just the way they're going about these things, like we was on a morning meeting yesterday, and um, they're talking about, and it proves that they're trying to push this agenda, okay, because like I said, uh, agencies, whether it be city, state, or federal agencies, they're all behind the shit that you see going on in the world. They know that you stand. So the director, he sent the email out, Talking about, oh, well, we're on our 67 case of COVID. Like, all of a sudden, towards the fall time, now we're getting all these new cases. We was barely, we was probably getting a case every two weeks at tops. But all of a sudden, since August, I want to say, you've been having cases jump up every day. Now he's talking about, well, we're going to reprimand people that don't wear a mask. And I'm like, so I was on a call, so I said, wait a minute. I said, for one thing, and I got on a call, me and this other guy we spoke on, and I'm like, for one thing, it's not federally mandated. I said, second of all, how does a mask even help people? I'm like, you telling people they have to wear a mask where they're going to uh, reprimand you for not doing so. I said, that's totally unethical. And they was like, yeah, we agree with that. You know, that's totally agree. That they, they couldn't say nothing against it. But, you know, they're like, we got to follow protocol. 
You know, and honestly, I still don't really rub my mask. I forget it because I'm not used to wearing it. You know, I'm using it in a truck by myself. Or if I go into the office, I don't even wear it for real. You know, unless somebody say, hey, wear your mask. But even then, I don't put it over my nose. You know, but it's just to show you how they're trying to clinch up. And by them doing that, it's like, yeah, man, I'm finna get up out of here. I'm not finna, I'm not finna be boggled down by this garbage because I know the type of spirit I got. I know I'm going to rebel against it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to question. I'm going to rebel against it. Like I brought out straight for it. I said, so what y'all going to do about vaccines? <laughs> My supervisor like, I'll be the first one to retire. They do that. I said, yeah, you say that now, you know, but at the end of the day, I can see where they're going with this. And this is why by the end of the year, before then, I'm already planning my way out of that place because I already see what they're going to try to do. And I'm I'm not going I'm not going for it. I'm not dealing with it. You're not going to threaten my livelihood all because some stupid pandemic. You're trying to scare people into believing in so you can push an agenda. It's just not. Nah, it's not going to happen. I'm not taking no shot. I'm not getting no tests. This is not going to happen. All right. So be it. But anyway, it says in that day, matter of fact, it says neither should there be any work for Egypt. It says, which the head or a tail or branch or rush may do. So eventually, all of us are going to be at a job. All right. Bankers, business owners, employees. This is why they doing everything remotely now. You know, like you go to Walmart. They got these stupid robots that's in the aisle now. You see what I'm saying? Because they're getting ready to get rid of you people. Like, you, there's no need. What, what you need a door greeter for? <laughs> okay. They're going to phase out them jobs. Certain Walmarts, they talking about getting rid of all the cashiers, which... It makes sense because cashiers have attitude problems anyway. For you to be the face of the store, you show lack the morale of customer service. You know, so, no, nah, get rid of them. McDonald workers, same thing. You know, restaurant workers, it's going to be all kiosks now that's going to be taking notice. And honestly, I'd rather deal with a kiosk than deal with a live person sometimes. Because honestly, you ain't got to deal with the madness. And that's sad me saying that, but it's the truth. But anyway, it says in that day, Egypt should be like unto women. And it should be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaked over it. Okay, so the spirit of the Lord is going to move heavily on Babylon. All right. And for more edification, you can read Genesis. Uh, what is it? I think. Uh, what is Genesis? When it goes into the famine, when the money fell in Egypt. Salaki, I can't remember the scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures. I believe Genesis 41 and 50. Matter of fact, let me stop being lazy and go check it out. That's the, yeah, come on, Jake. Get it together. 41. Uh, no, I'm tripping. Uh, 45 and. I think it's 47. Yep, 47 and 15. When it says, When the money fell in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all Egyptians came into Joseph and said, Give us bread, why should we die in thy presence for the money fell it? All right. And also, you brothers can read Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. But anyway, with that, I'm out. All praises and glory, honor, that's due to you. How about you? How was shy? And with that, Shalom and the Baba Ba, Lord, where you were edified. Shalom.